Hey guys, this one is for uh, one of the problems on the unit two practice test that is also on homework number homework for week nine. Um, this is number fourteen. Um, while the first couple parts are pretty straightforward, where we're using uh, the mean, we're finding the mean and standard deviation. But later we're gonna have to connect this to normal distribution and find probability. So this is a great question. I hope you do this one on your homework first uh, before you do this one on your practice set, uh, test, so that you can try a couple practice problems. Or, well, you know, because the practice, unit practice test, that's not going to tell you if you got it right or wrong uh, by each part. So here we go. A, you, a student running for a position in student government believes that 56% of the student body will vote for her. However, she is worried about low voter turnout. Complete parts A through D below. Assuming she truly has 56% support in the entire student body, now, my number, guys, is 56%. Maybe your number is 55%, 47%. So don't use my exact number. Just use this as an example, okay? Find the mean and standard deviation of, I would highlight this word, sampling distribution for the proportion. This is straight from unit uh, lesson 7.1 that we just went over today. Sampling distribution for the proportion. Remember how to find the mean and standard deviation for these guys. Uh, of votes she will receive if only n equals 300 students show up for voting. Let's give them the mean. Remember, mean is the same as the the proportion, right, the P. So mean is 56% in decimal, type in 0 0.56. Standard deviation, this one though, we have to use a formula. And I've been doing some work on the side uh, to do this standard deviation. But here's the formula for you. Square root of P times 1 minus P divided by N. So let's do that. Remember, P is 0 0.56, N minus, or I'm sorry, 1 minus 0 0.56 is getting multiplied, and we're dividing by N. Remember, she said 300 students, right? Type this in your calculator and see if you can get the standard deviation. Now, this part, we'll do that later. That's for um, part B. Mm, square root of of 0 0.56 times 1 minus 0 0.56 and you divide that by 300. I'm going to type up what I have here 0 0.0286589. Now I typed up all of it because I don't know how they want you to round it. I'm going to go ahead and copy this here and read the rounding direction. Round to three decimal places. So I just need one, two, three numbers um, after that. So that's four numbers. 0.286, let me, because this is 86, I'm going to have to just round this up to 0.9. So the answer is 0 0.029. So not only that, it's going to, you're going to have to be careful finding the standard deviation. Also be careful with your rounding, okay? We check answer, that's it. See on the homework, they check each part for you, but unit practice test, they're not going to tell you until you submit the whole thing. So please do unit 9 homework first. I'm sorry, week 9 homework first before you try the practice test, okay? Now, the second part. Is it reasonable to assume a normal shape for this sampling distribution? Explain. Now, remember, in order for you to assume normal, um, you need to meet two conditions. And those conditions were... That and the number of success, um, number of success has to be greater than or equal to 15, and then the number of failures has to be greater than or equal to 15. So here we go. Let's try to find the number of success. In this case, the expected vote for this student. Okay, um, how many people out of 300 people? Um, the proportion was what number? Point five six for mine. So if I multiply 300 times 0.56, I'm expecting about 168 people to vote for this student. And that number, 168, is definitely greater than or equal to 15. So I'm going to type this in. Uh, 168 uh, expected vote for this student. Well, And listen, think about this. If you are expecting out of 300 to... Um, out of 300, 
that 168 of them are going to vote for her, how many will not vote for her? And this one, you will simply do 300 minus 168. Um, and 300 minus 168 is 132. And you can find this by using that other formula that we gave, n times q. And q is what? Um, the, the proportion of people who will not vote for her, right? If 56% will vote for her, 44% uh, will not vote for her. So Q here is 0.44. If you do 300 times 0.44, you will get 132. Either way, we get 132. So notice 132 is also greater than or equal to 15, right? Now, if these numbers are bigger than 15, then we can assume it is reasonable to assume normal shape, okay? So we have to check that. If one of these numbers come out to be smaller than 15, then we're going to say it's not, we can't assume normal. But now we can assume normal. This is fantastic. You got it. We're going to use normal distribution to find some probability. C says, how likely is it that she will not get the majority of the vote? What do they mean by majority? That means winning over 50%, right? So what's the chance that she will not get the majority of the vote? That is a sample proportion of 50% or lower from the 300 vote cast. Now, let me type out what we want to find. We want to find this. We want to find the probability that X is less than 0.5. But remember, in a normal distribution, X is less than 5, uh, less than 0.50 is exactly the same thing as uh, X is less than or equal to, right? Because in the continuous distribution, um, we assume that probability that X is exactly equal to 0.5 is 0. So I'm going to find this on my normal distribution calculator, which can be found where? StatCrunch. So go to StatCrunch, please. And I was playing with it earlier over here with the different percent, uh, the mean here. But let me start from the beginning. Go to stat, calculators, and go to normal. Because in part B, we said, oh, it's okay to assume normal. Now we got that normal calculator open. Oh my gosh, what am I clicking on? And then we're ready to type in the mean. Remember, the mean was 0.56. For my example, yours is going to be different. The standard deviation is 0.029. Now, we want the probability that x is less than 50%. So I typed in x is less than or equal to 0.50. Like I said, it can be less than or less than or equal to because in a normal distribution, in a continuous distribution, chance of it happening at exactly 0.5, we assume that to be zero. All right, hit enter. We computed it. We got the probability. I'm going to copy this and put it in this box and round this here. Um, they want you to round this to the nearest four decimal places. Looks like I have one, two, three, four numbers. So 27, I'm going to have to round this up to 30. So let's check this. That probability is going to be about 1.93%, but I'm going to give them the decimal they want. All right, check answer. Well done. Last one. Well, oh my goodness, now they want you to do a little more work. Instead of n equals 1,000, well, guess what? If they, change the, if they change the sample size, we have to find the standard deviation all over again. But don't worry, we got this. Um, so instead of 300, type in this time 1,000 for the sample, uh, what's it called, sample size. We're going to have to find the standard deviation all over again. Um, type in square root of 0 0.56 times 1 minus 0 0.56, and we're going to divide this time by 1,000. Earlier, we divided by 300. But what if she gets a, gets a bigger sample size? Um, then this came out to be, I'm going to copy what I have, 0 0.01569. But let's just round this to... Um, Maybe though, now here's the thing guys, I don't think I should round this in the middle of a problem because you see how sensitive they are about rounding. So I'm going to go ahead and write down as much as I can so that I avoid rounding in the middle of a problem. This is what my scientific calculator gave me and I'm going to go with this as my standard deviation. Is that okay with you? 
because you know what I'm trying to avoid. If I accidentally round this too far or too small or too big, and I use that standard deviation to find my final answer, they may say, oh, your answer is not close enough. All right, I'm, I'm gonna ignore this call. I can send, sorry, I can't talk right now. Okay, I'm gonna copy the standard deviation because guess what didn't change? <laughs> the mean did not change. So we're gonna keep the mean of same 0.56 but standard deviation, I just got that to be that tiny little number that I try to be as accurate as possible. And now, what did they want? Same type, right? Uh, instead, if instead N is 1,000 students sh uh, show up for voting, how likely is it then that she will not win the majority? Again, winning the majority means, uh, you know, getting more than 50% of the vote but not winning the majority will be getting less than 50%. So compute the same exact scenario. I got the answer right here. It's a very, very tiny probability. It's so small, it, they didn't even graph it over here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and copy this over here. Um, they want you to round it to the four decimal places. Oh my goodness, really? So one, two, three, four. I should round that six up and make it one. Everything just goes away. So, wow, that probability is very small. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to go ahead and check this. Excellent. Now that's it. Now, I don't think there is a way for you to just all of a sudden figure this out on your own. There, You need to make sure that you watch, watch all the lesson videos, try the homework on week nine. But if you're just opening unit two practice test to see if you can do them, I don't think that's going to be a good idea. So make sure you do all the homework before you try unit two practice test um, because you're going to see them on your uh, exam two next week. Okay, that took me about 12 minutes because I was talking through it. Um, but if you have any other questions, let me know. Okay.